So we have a board, a pawn, and a bishop. Not enough for a game of chess, but we're doing really well. Now the rook is another one that everyone gets woefully wrong, and the problem is down to a lack of understanding of topology. This is the one we're going to make, and while it may look like others you've seen, it actually has a fundamentally different topology than you're probably used to. Let's start a new general scene, and we'll just delete the default cube and we can get on. Let's quickly add a reference image as we've done with the others, and I'll show you what most people do and why it's wrong. So I'll press 1, switch to the front view, press Shift and A and select Image Reference. Find our image and change a few settings as usual in its properties over here. So change the Y to 0 so it sits on the baseline, change the depth to front so it's in front of everything, and change the opacity to 0 0.5 so we can see through it. I also like to change it to only axis aligned because that's where we do our extruding. Now I'll just press F2 and rename it to Rook Reference and we can start. Now as with the other pieces everyone always starts at the bottom with a mesh circle or a mesh plane. Again leaving the detail at the top to guesswork and this piece in particular suffers the most from this bad decision. So as usual I'll just keep extruding these loops up in Z. I can always go around and add loops with Control R if I need but I'm just going to do this one quite quickly. So they'll continue extruding the body up and then, well I've seen a few variations in this one but they generally go something like this. Extrude a few loops up to make the head, extrude and scale the top one, and then extrude again and just move it down in Z. Often all the vertices are scaled to zero along X and Y to leave this flat platform. Now of course the rook needs its towers and this is where the main mistake is made. Groups of faces are selected around the top which uh, normally takes people a few attempts to find a combination of faces and gaps that fit within the amount of geometry you have and that's, that's what happens if you start at the bottom. Even this is done poorly. The correct way to do this is not to move around selecting faces but if you're going to do this select the whole ring and then use the checker deselect tool. Specifying the selected and unselected amounts until you find a fit. Anyway, eventually you find something that fits, it's, it's normally 3 and 1 or 3 and 2. You don't have much flexibility when you start this way. And then you press E to extrude them. And as soon as you do that, you've broken this shape. You now have five spoked poles on an internal corner, which makes the next steps confusing. And it can be hard to tell why. You would have hoped to have some input in the shape of the top of the tower, and you don't really have any at all now. Everything looks a bit soft, so you start trying to add tightening loops, but nothing comes out the way you hope. You bring maybe this one down here, but you see that the, the tower starts curving away into the center, and you may want to tighten up this, so you, you can add one uh, around the all of the outside here, but that just kind of makes this worse. Uh, you can end up uh, putting one across the entire cross section and pulling them together, and that kind of tightens everything up, but you start to get uh, rendering artifacts, and, and nothing is really working the way you want it to. You've really lost control of this shape and it's because of these five spoked poles. They're adding an extra direction of pull which is really difficult to work around. There are some three spoked poles up at the tops of the towers. It's not a huge problem, it's something we call termination and I'll deal with that in a, in a later tutorial. But the main problem comes from the fact that there's just no flow all around the edge of the tower and it's quite difficult to fix when we started this way. We lost control ages ago. This is a terrible way to do it. I could fix it and again I, I can show you how to do that in a later tutorial. But there's a much better way. We can delete all of this. It's rubbish. Now this method's very different and you'll see it leaves much less to chance. You get to build and design your route properly with lots of control and a great topology. Let's start by adding a mesh plane and immediately rename it by pressing F2 and typing Rook. I've mentioned before that Blender really likes having things sitting up so their main detail is visible in the front view. And to make this true for the plane we have to rotate it by 90 degrees in X. So I'll press R X uh, 90 and hit enter. Now press Control A and choose rotation to apply this rotation. Now before we do anything at all with this plane we're going to add some modifiers. First of all we'll add an array modifier and this will control how many towers we have in our model. So add one and let's change the counter 4. Make sure the merge checkbox is ticked or we end up with double vertices along the edges. Next we want to wrap our shape into a circle uh, which we can do by adding a simple deform modifier and changing it to bend and change the axis to Z. You can see as I increase the angle it's, it's kind of bending round so if I change this to 360 it'll force it to be a complete circle. Now the simple deform doesn't have a merge option so the first and last points of the circle are not connected. We can fix this by simply adding a weld modifier next which just collapses overlapping points together. We don't need to change any parameters in this one it'll just sit there doing its job. Next we want to add a solidify modifier to our object. We won't use it eventually as there is a better method, but while we're designing our Rook's head it'll give us a really good idea of, of what it'll eventually look like. 
I'm going to set the thickness to 0.3 being as anything and change it at any time. Finally, our stack needs a subdivision surface modifier because that's what we're trying to create. Just press Ctrl and 3 to add a subdivision surface modifier in object mode. Now we're ready to start. If we switch to edit mode, we'll see that all we have to work with is this one face of the plane. So if I press A to make sure everything is selected, and I right click and subdivide it, maybe do that three times, we'll see the shape turn into a much smoother ring. Now if I go to face select mode, and maybe select these top three rows of faces, I can start making a tower shape, which I do by deselecting faces to make the shape of it. You can make any shape you want in here, but the two rows at the edge must be at the same height, and it must be surrounded all around the edge by selected faces. Now, when I think I might be happy with the shape, I can press I to inset, and in the box down here, I need to deselect boundary. And then I just press X and select delete faces, and you'll see our towers appear instantly on the model. And around the top of our shape, we have the border that we need, which gives us the correct topology for this kind of shape. If I'm unhappy with the shape or the spacing, I can just undo a couple of times, change my shape, inset, press X again to delete the faces and, and have a look again. We've got a lot of control already. Now I might decide at this point I only want three towers so I can change the array count to three and everything rearranges itself perfectly. Maybe I want six towers or more. It's all under my control and the border you see at the top of our plane has given us the exact topology for everything to work correctly. Now the only thing you can't change is the position of any vertex along the X axis. The tubular nature of the piece means it must have evenly spaced loops running vertically. That's always true of any ring shape in subdivision surface modeling. Now it's worth playing with the plane to see what you can do. You could cut shapes out of it. If I just insert this and then delete the faces, we've cut a hole out of this shape. We can extrude sections out of it. I could select these faces here, again insert them, and then extrude them out. Have we've created this shape here. There are lots of possibilities. And all the while we can control the amount of towers and the thickness to get a good design. And you're always just a few undos from getting back to your simple plane. Now this is a bit silly, so I'm just going to go back and create my simple arrangement. So select the arrangement of faces I need, then press I to insert, move that down, and then just press X to delete those faces at the top. I might want to take a few of these rows at the bottom, we just don't need them, they're not adding anything to our geometry, and delete those too. I like the look of that, classic Rook. Once you're happy with the design and the arrangement, it's time to move on to the next step so we can control even more of the shape. So we can apply the array modifier, uh, apply the symbol to form, the weld modifier to make our mesh. I normally delete the solidify modifier as it does things slightly incorrectly. I don't want to go into it now, but be aware that the solidify modifier is often not the best way to add thickness to something. I'll just leave the subdivision surface modifier in place doing its job. Now, if I'm in edit mode, I can press A to select everything, then press E to extrude, Press Shift and Z so that it's only being scaled along the X and Y axis. And now when I move the mouse, I can decide on the thickness of the walls. And this gives us the opportunity to add some control loops around the top of the piece to control the sharpness of the edges around the wall. There's lots of ways to do this. I can either just press Control and R and uh, add a loop or two loops. Or I can go to Face Select Mode, Alt and click an edge and select the entire ring. And then inset that. That's doing the same thing just from the outside so you can make sure they're more evenly spaced if you want to do it that way. Now these are control loops, so I like to mark them red using the mark seam option. And that looks great. I can still change the shape from here if I wanted to maybe sharpen up the tower. It would have been better to do this while we were shaping with the plane, but I can do it now. Uh, the best thing to do here is to add one to each tower, just leaving it in place. Then shift, alt and click them all. Mark them in red with mark seam. Now press control and G and add them to a new vertex group, which we'll rename to tower sharpness. Now we can always just select this vertex group and press GG to slide the control loops all up and down together. Now Rook generally has a platform in the middle somewhere so we can quickly add that by alt clicking on the very bottom ring of faces and pressing X to delete them. Then change to edge select mode and select the bottom loop on the inside. Press control plus a few times and delete those edges. Now on the last edge you have just alt click to select it. Press E to extrude then S to scale and do this twice. And when you get to the middle, just press Grid Fill to fill in the middle nicely. I always like to rotate it to match the axis, but you don't have to do that. Now this looks good and the topology is great, so we may as well take advantage of its flexibility to add a little bit more interest to our shape, which gives me the opportunity to start talking about the lattice modifier. A lattice is like a cubic cage which we can use to manipulate a much more complex mesh. 
like our shape. And their amazing modeling tools if your underlying geometry is good and ours is good. Now we need to select our mesh and move it so that it uh, surrounds its origin. But we want to move it to the center of its bounding box, which will help us to add the lattice. So with our object selected, we just go up to the object menu and choose set origin, geometry to origin. And then down here in this little dialog box, we can change the center to bound center, which moves it to the center of the object's bounding box. Just what we need to put our lattice in the right place. Now press shift now to bring up the add menu and choose lattice from the drop down menu. This adds our lattice object and to make it match the exact size of our shape, we need to simply copy the dimensions of our shape to the dimensions of the lattice. Select our rook and hover over our dimension, press Ctrl and C, then select the lattice and hover over the matching dimension and press Ctrl and V. Do this for the others and the lattice will sit perfectly around our mesh. Now we need to select our rook shape and add a lattice modifier to it in order to pair the two things up. And in the drop down box in the modifier, just select lattice, which is our lattice object. Now if we select our lattice object and, and press this green icon down here, we'll see that the lattice itself has a resolution which you can control in its properties. Some amazing things can be done because of the way the resolution works, and I'll talk about those when we make the queen for our chess set. But for now, just change all the resolution values to 3, and you'll see that our lattice has extra detail added to it in the 3D view. Now tab to edit mode, and we can kind of manipulate it in the same way that we can a mesh. So I just select all of the top row of points and scale them up a little. And we'll see our whole mesh adapt to try to follow the lattice object. I might scale the bottom row down a little. And if I now increase the resolution of the lattice, you'll see it alter its shape by interpolating between the rows. Makes everything really nice and smooth. So that looks great. We can now simply apply the lattice modifier and we can delete the lattice object. We don't need it anymore. And that's it for the head. We can now start extruding the body out as we did with the pawn and the bishop. It's really simple. We just alt and click to select the very bottom row switch to the front view and we can start extruding all of our points down to match the shape of the rook. I'm going to do it fairly quickly. You can spend as much time on this as you want. You can stick to your reference or not. It's uh, It doesn't matter. It's a creative process. But don't forget when you get to the bottom, you do have to only translate the bottom two loops and then only scale the last two loops. Let's orbit around and again, we can just select grid fill and fill that in, rotate it around to match the axis. I always like to do that. And that's the root down. We still have lots of control over it. It's uh, made from all quads. It's two manifold as usual. It can deal with anything. It's a really good model. So again, I'll just kind of finalize it as we've done with the others in uh, edit mode. We select the very bottom vertex, press shift and S and say cursor to selected. Go to object mode, uh, right click and say set origin, origin to 3D cursor. Now move over and change its dimensions. I'm going to make this one six centimeters. So I'll choose the Z dimension and just type six centimeters. And then I'll hover over the Z scale and press Ctrl and C and then just hover over X and Y and press Ctrl and V to paste those two things in. I just move up and I'll set all of the location parameters to zero. I'll press Ctrl A and apply all transforms. And then I can save my scene. I'll save it as Rook. And that's it. That's the Rook done. We've now got three really good pieces and a board. Only three more pieces to go and we'll have a full chess set. And I think the next one we'll do, well, let's do the Queen.